Yeah. Okay, so we had industrial smog. So smog, first off is, a couple of I thought was a fun fact, is a mixture of the words smog and fog. Smoke and fog. Smoke and fog. He said smog. Mixture, so smog is a mixture of air pollutants caused by fossil fuel combustion, or well, smog is just like another, contains soot, which is just particulate matter. And industri industrial smog releases a high amounts of carbon dioxide as well as particulate matter. And it kind of emits like unburned carbon, which enters the at like the atmosphere in solid form or soot. And this particulate matter, as particulate the carbon, also gets released as mercury, sulfur, or also carbon pollutants and coal and just other fossil fuel combustion. Uh, sources and chemicals. Um, it started in the Industrial Re Revolution when heating was primarily coal. Industrial smog is made up of two primary components, sulfur and dioxide and particulates. Uh, particulates are small particles of matter, soot, dust, ash, um, and they are produced by burning coal. Factories and many other stores uh, and like many other things also like burn coal and release these uh, particulate matters into the atmosphere. Um, sulfuric acid combines with H2O in the atmosphere to create acidic rain, H2SO4. Um, the sulfur dioxide from production of coal and other fossil fuels dissolves in the water and becomes a toxic stew of thick fog and particles. And that's kind of how um, smog, like industrial smog, like forms and what it can do. Whoa! Smog Whoa. has Whoa. bad effects. Mainly respiratory ones because like the pollutants of particulate matter cause uh, a range of lung problems and cardiovascular problems. Those pollutants specifically are um, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, etc. But um, for humans, it causes most frequently causes like asthma attacks, coughing, and bronchiolitis. Um, but severe cases uh, can lead to lung cancer. Um, and then, not as common, but still related, uh, cardiovascular disease, um, and it causes teratogens, so uh, infants will experience neurological disorders, even um, cancer at birth, low birth weight, and other problems like that. So, effects on wildlife are similar in some ways, like larger mammals can also get those same respiratory problems. And the most common victim are birds because birds are, are in, inhaling um, the pollutants of smog at a much higher rate. Um, and then it also causes a lot of habitat destruction. So it damages and kills plants and vegetation that animals rely on for food and shelter. Um, and then it also pollutes water. So not only animals that drink from these water sources, but the actual aquatic life in it is severely affected as well. So for our historical events, um, we looked at London. And so in 1952, there was this insane industrial smog event that happened that sucked in the entire city. And they called it like the pea super. And there was a large, large amount of dust, but it, they also call it the Great Smog of London, and it covered the city for five days. Um, it started when the, an anti-cyclone kind of settled over London, and an anti-cyclone is basically a giant like wind system, and it's kind of spinning, and it's just a big storm. Um, this caused cold air to be trapped under warmer air, and that cold air wouldn't allow any of the, like, the smoke or chemicals or anything out of the factories that surrounded London or any of the chimneys that were burning like wood to keep their houses and apartments warm. And so that got stuck under the cold air and formed this smog that was stuck over the whole city. And that phenomenon is also known as a? Inversion? Yes, a thermal inversion. Yeah, uh, the, the idea of the, the cold air stuck under the warm air is a thermal inversion. Um, what else? Uh, basically, there was like a huge a lot, a amount of like uh, lung issues for people that were like, as the older you got, the harder it was for you to like function outside for long times. Um, there was like bronchitis. Um, after like years, people developing lung cancer. 
um, babies were having a, a really hard time breathing. Um, I would say like people our age were like the best off because you could kind of face a lot more issues. But um, yeah, there was around 12,000 deaths uh, just from these like five days of insane. It was you could barely see like five feet in front of you at times. Um, we have a video from the crowd talking about it. It doesn't really get the job done. It was like. the where and normally like you don't find super heavily like small events like in London anymore because we've highly regulated like factories and like like trying to limit the smog that they put out especially due to Clean Air Act and just other like focusing on the environment but um it's like there's I'm still in like heavily industrialized regions of like China India and Eastern Europe where there's a ton of factories you'll still find concentrated smog levels and just anywhere where coal is being burned on an industrial scale will affect air quality. So adding on to what Connor was saying, the regulations and laws. So after the great smog of London, uh, the dangers of industrial smog were talked about like more and so the world started to like notice how dangerous um, chemicals coming from factories and like burning coal could be. Um, so the, they started talking about the like Clean Air Act, and that was enacted in 1963. Um, so basically, the EPA regulates most air quality regulations, particulate matter, and sulfur dioxide are like the main components of smog, and they highly regulate re regulate those things. Um, they are carefully watched by the Clean Air Act, which applies to national the national ambient air quality standard. Clean Air Act is a, fed, is, is a federal law that allows the regulates of all sources and air emissions. Um, yeah, and this like applies to things from like factories and also like your since like people burn coal like in their houses or like they burn wood like that also releases these like toxins into the environment and you also have to watch that especially in big cities when they highly relied on like coal to keep them warm. But now we have other sources of heat. Um, yeah. And basically, the EPA is like in charge of regulating um, anything having to do with like toxic materials entering the atmosphere. Um, and this graph just shows that these laws have actually prevented and helped a lot in lowering the emissions. Can you just tell us the scale on the on the graph? That way, on video, we know what we're looking at. Yeah, it goes from 1990 to 2018, and then the other side is the uh, the CO. It's the CO2. The CO2 in, in Which one's on top top line? Which is the one at the very top? That's NOx. The, that's NOx at yeah. the top? It, it, it goes NOx, then uh, box, uh, SO2, and then NOx, PM10 and PM2.5? Yeah. So that, that refers, matter. just so you know, that's, that's particular matter. matter. Do you know what the 10 stands for? Is that, no. It's no. the size of the particle in oh. microns. So 10 is bigger than 2, right? 2.5 is, is less than uh, the diameter of your hair. And so when you start getting that size, your air mass that we use like against COVID and stuff become ineffective. Now on to solutions, um, by better understanding like the emissions we as a people release in our environment, we as a people can better like combat like the effects that they bring 
and great strides have been made like to reduce the amount of industrial smog being released, but there's always more to be done. And like green bills are essentially just like environmentally focused legislation that regulates and minimizes these pollutants and like their effect on our world pretty much. Um, and renewable and sustainable energy is the future by moving away from this dirty fuel that has several other complications in our society. We can just better protect the environment. All right, good. Let's take a moment to clarify stuff. Let's ask, are there questions from you in the audience? Is there something you need to clarify? I'm looking at your notes. Um, you know what you still need to know. Go ahead. What were the chemicals made of? Because you guys didn't have them on your slide. You said them, but they weren't on your slide. Oh, so, uh, sulfur dioxide, uh, particulate matter. Are those primary pollutants or secondary? Those are our primary pollutants. And what's this? Did, did you all catch the source of those coal. chemicals? Yeah, coal is the big bad guy. You see this common thread. This is why coal is considered dirty fuel. It's powerful, no question about it, but it's dirty. Is this a point or a non point source? It's mainly a point source. Now, the one with the P super, uh, is the one that's color small. At that time, in London, and it's okay you didn't get that detail. No. That that at that time, everybody in London was burning coal in their homes instead of like uh, firewood. So they had a little piece of coal they put in their little heater in their home, and so there's all these non-point sources <laughs> burning on top of the point sources, and then you get that inversion, and it lasts five days. And in the end, is 12,000 people dead. Dude. Not good. Right? Is there any secondary pollutants involved? Did you, do, were there any secondary pollutants? In other words, it's form. You mentioned acid rain, but that it goes to a different problem. And of course, inhaling acid rain doesn't work. Right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Other questions about it? Solutions again were what? Green bills and just moving away from coal and fossil fuels. What's the one that's cleaning it up? What's had the best results so far? Yeah. Clean Air Act. All of us are now. Pardon? All of us are now. Yeah, every, that, that's the point. I'm trying to make sure you see that pattern. Is this an easy answer? Definitely on the quiz. But ask about the Clean Air Act. It also forces, the regulations force new, te new technology to reduce it. So one thing you didn't have in there is a type of technology that takes particulates and sulfur oxides out of the air, but I bet you can guess what those are on a big point source. A uh, what was it, what'd you say? You said a scrubber too? No. What'd you say? I said Yeah, this is essentially what it is, but a scrubber, it may be doing it with, with water and a filter, or it may be doing uh, static-based stuff and a filter. So there's different combinations of filters uh, or scrubbers, and I'm not asking you to know the specific ones because this is intro to environmental science at college level. Okay, good. Any other questions? You feel like you got it? All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn this off.